Welcome to episode 59 of the Talking Friars podcast. I'm your host, Ben Fadden, here with Jacob Zimmerman. Uh, back with you, coming to you after the Giants Padres series wrapped up. Four games. The Padres looked terrible the first two games, just like they looked uh, in the Dodgers series when they got swept. Uh, but then the, the next two games, they were back to being that like April Padres team where they were scoring runs and seemed, and who knows, guess what? They were having fun. Uh, crazy how when you score runs and w- you're winning games, you're having more fun. Uh, mm-hmm. But first off, uh, your initial impressions of this series, and then we'll get into the games itself. I mean, just overall, just finishing strong. I like how, you know, we started off terrible. I mean, it, it was it was awful. And then you add on, you know, the addition of people going to the IL. Um, you look like, you know, you're losing all this hope. And then these last two games, I don't know what clicked, but something happened. And then to finish it off, keeping us close in that wild card race, which is crucial, especially going into this next series. Um, yeah, I just really liked how we finished strong, battled back, and uh, were able to take two and split this series. Mm-hmm. All right, so without further ado, let's get into the games. Uh, after we get into the games, we'll do, you know, just talk about where the Padres stand in relation to the Cardinals, in relation to the other teams, um, and obviously preview this big St. Louis series, the biggest series of the year um, coming up. This That's happening this weekend starting Friday. Uh, let's start with game one. On Monday, this was a four-game series. Padres were obviously coming off that getting swept by the Dodgers. Uh, in a series where they were flat, in a series where they, you know, looked overmatched in these first two games of this four-game set, that was pretty much the same thing. Uh, Padres lost nine to one on Monday. Uh, before the series, bad news already started happening. Uh, Chris Paddock uh, was put on the 10-day IL retroactive to September 12th with the right elbow inflammation. I wasn't really expecting this, but it's not like I was totally you know, surprised by it based on his comments that he made after his last start where he was mentioning how the velocity was down a little bit. I think that last inning, uh, he mentioned that he had some dead arm. Uh, So, I mean, maybe that's just overwork or that's the two, you know, pretty kind of the two breaks that he had where there was a pretty, you know, long period of time with the COVID and with the oblique injury where he wasn't, you know, pitching competitively. So that might play into it. Um, but that's obviously not good news because Paddock was pitching pretty dang well. Um, and it's obviously one less starter, uh, the Padres can, you know, put out there and now they have to put Vince Velasquez out there tomorrow, which we'll get to, um, they have to put out Jake Arrieta. Uh, you'd think that Chris Matt who pitched great today and Weathers are going to have to, you know, step up more. So it's it's a it's a trickle down effect when one guy you know goes on the IL, and now it's two guys with Snell uh, going on the IL as well uh, with that groin uh, injury. That's why Velasquez was signed, and we'll get to that. Uh, but as for Monday's game, Sean Anderson was called up. Uh, Paddock, by the way, eligible to come off the IL next Wednesday, the twenty second, I believe. Um, entering Monday. I was looking these up. There was some uh, weird statistics or not weird, but it was some kind of mind boggling stats that I saw uh, going into Monday. The Padres since August 11th uh, were eight and 19 going in and they only had 3.4 runs per game. Their team batting average was 202. Uh, They only had 24 home runs since August 11th going into Monday. So that's like that's a month where you only had 24 homers. Uh, So that's definitely not good compared to other offenses. Uh, But the Potters had a chance to, you know, kind of get something going. And they obviously didn't do that. Uh, Four pitches in Tommy LaStella hits a solo homer to center. Lamonte Wade Jr. then tripled into the right center gap. A two nothing. Uh, It was Darvish, a 29 pitch first inning. Uh, yeah. which is, you can't have that, you know, especially the first inning of a start kind of puts you behind the eight ball. Um, and this was one of the worst starts of the year, maybe if not the worst. Yeah. Uh, four innings, he only goes, he gives up eight runs, four home runs. 
Uh, so you can look it up on the Talking Fires Twitter. There was where I put a thread of the location where he wanted to throw the pitch and where it ended up on all of the home runs. Um, and it was pretty mind boggling. Uh, you know, Caratini was setting up inside or low and inside and end up being over, right over the middle of the plate or it ended up being high and outside or it ended up being in, you know, a hitter sweets zone. And so he just wasn't hitting, hitting his spots. I kind of wrote that on Gaslamp Ball about that. He just wasn't hitting his spots. Um, and maybe the injury still was playing a factor in it. Um, but I know Darvish isn't going to make those excuses. So I guess you, you kind of have to hope that he pitches better on Saturday, right? Oh, yeah, 100%. I mean, as you said, you know, I looked at that thread you had. Um, it just it feels like it's been happening a lot lately, too, with him. You know, he's not hitting his spots as much, um, especially, you know, compared to what we saw in the beginning of the year where he was mm -hmm. locating very well. Um, and, yeah, that was the main reason, you know, he, he gave the hitters a hit they could hit, you know, and the, the Giants aren't a team that you can really do that to this year. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it, it wasn't – it probably was the worst start of Darvish's Padre career this year. Um, but, I mean, I, I, don't, I don't think it'll be too worry, worrisome, you know, moving forward because I think it, he's kind of due to have a good start. You know, that's what you kind of hope to think. But, again, it's just locating, and hopefully he can get back to that, uh, you know, beginning of the year Darvish where he, could, he was locating very well. Yeah, because we'll get to the Padres who else is starting this – you know, weekend and it's not, um, it doesn't put a great, uh, yeah. I guess, sense of mind going in when you, this is probably the biggest series of the year uh, against the Cardinals this weekend. And you don't have Musgrove going, uh, you don't have Snell going, obviously. So we'll get to that. Uh, but as for Monday's game, Padres dropped to 74 and 69. Uh, they started this road trip now 0-4 after getting swept by the Dodgers, losing that game. They then lost Tuesday uh, 6-1. to Again, when you combine for two runs in two games, it's, it's hard to win. Uh, Giants, again, six runs on Tuesday. Padres pregame, they signed Ross Detweiler to a major league contract, wearing number 45. Sean Anderson was sent down. Uh, Detweiler... He's just going to be a depth guy yeah. in the bullpen, not going to have a huge role, I don't think. Kind of mop up duty, blowouts, or mm -hmm. early, you know, going in to, you know, bridge to Hudson and Melanson and guys like that. Um, but it's it's definitely, you know, the Pomerantz injury, the Kella injury, uh, Strom, those injuries definitely have kind of put – an emphasis on having to bring in guys, you know, in the bullpen, just, you know, like Ross Detweiler, uh, <laughs> because that wasn't the plan going into the year. That wasn't the plan when Pomerantz returned from the aisle earlier this year, and then he had to, you know, be out for the year. Um, so that signing, bringing him back, just hasn't really turned out really well this year. Uh, last year he was he pitched good, but this year has not gone well uh but again as for Detweiler you're not probably you're not going to see him in any you know huge situations I don't think unless Tingler and you know the coaching staff kind of mismanages the bullpen um but and that's I guess that's a possibility yeah um, <laughs> but uh as for this game Posey had a solo home run Jake Aaron had a started Posey had a solo home run Wow, that was one of the worst mislocation pitches I've seen. I mean, oh, yeah. he wanted it outside and end up two feet inside. Way inside, yeah. So I don't know how Posey hit it out for one, and then to miss that bad. It's not like he, he even it was... threw it over the middle of the plate. He wanted it on one side of the plate, and he threw it two feet on the other side. So it was uh, bad, yeah. I guess he, I guess he deserves, he deserves to uh, not uh, have success against Posey in that at yeah. bat based on that pitch. Um, Let's see here. Ariadne had an errant pickoff. Was still a single. Uh, that made it three to one. San Francisco in the fourth. Darren Ruff hit an RBI double in the gap uh, late in the game. Made it four to one. Melanson pitched in the eighth. Uh, didn't have a great night. He gave up two runs, one hit, one walk. Uh, this was 
one of those where he hadn't pitched in a while because they obviously got swept by the Dodgers. So there was no save situation. So the Padres are just looking to get him in the game. Um, mm-hmm. And I mean, I'm not, I'm not surprised. Were you surprised? I mean, no. he, when he's not in the same situation, he's, it feels like he's a different pitcher. Oh yeah. I, I mean, you can't really, I, I wasn't really surprised, but you know, you really can't blame the guy. He, he's a closer. He's supposed to come in and save situations when he, you know, that's when he shows up. But, you know, we, we I felt like we were already, you know, going to lose anyway. I mean, it was, what was it? At that point, it was, what, four to one? Yeah, yeah. four to one. Um, you know, maybe there's a chance, but I, I don't know. As a Padre fan, you're like, it's like adding insult to injury, you know, kind of. It was just like, all right, Melanson, get out there, you know, get some in-game time before – you know, we need you in a safe situation so you don't blow the save, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. This was their fifth straight loss. Uh, terrible way to start the road trip, 0-5. Um, yeah. That's definitely not the way you want any road trip to go. You're obviously trying to win every day. Uh, and definitely it was not a pleasant – it can't be – if you're a member of the media and you're asking Tingler these questions, it's like you're asking these questions, these same questions, like every night. How does it feel to lose again? How does it feel to not score any runs? What's the problem with the offense? And then Tingler, well, I mean, I, I get that some got people, you know, get frustrated with, well, Tingler doesn't know the, the, the solution and, or why they're struggling. And, but it's kind of like, okay, what are you supposed to say? I mean, our guys are grinding. That's what he's supposed to say. Our guys are grinding out on bats. They're going to keep going through it. Uh, they'll keep, they're going to keep going. They haven't given up. Uh, we believe that there's another stretch run in us and we're just going to try to keep that going tomorrow or get it going tomorrow. I mean, that's really what it was. It's, yeah, it's, it's the same thing every time because what, he, what else is he supposed to say? No, uh, our offense sucks. Uh, no, our season's <laughs> over. Um, no, you Darvish was really, really bad. I, I don't have confidence in him. No, of course he's going to have confidence and yeah. say that. So uh, it's not surprising. You can't really take much of his comments that seriously um, in terms of, you know, thinking that, oh, we're going to grind through at bats and all that just because it's, it's, again, what is he supposed to say? You know? Yeah. I- it's just, it's media control. You know, you don't want to say anything too bad. You don't want to cause any issues in the locker room or in the right. press because the media will blow it out of proportion. You know, any, you know, fine little word that you say can be blown crazy into the media. And He's just, he's downplaying it. And that's just, it's just his job. You know, there's nothing really, he's going to say the same thing over and over. He's not going to yeah. give the media something to use. Yeah. So since the Padres lost on Tuesday, the Cardinals won, they, the Mets really gave them uh, this wild card lead uh, after the Mets won the series against the Yankees at City Field over the weekend. Then they get swept. And so that definitely didn't help out the Padres. Uh, and the Mets season is now over. Um, yeah. yeah. Uh, but moving to Wednesday, third game, this is where the bright spots, you know, started coming up. So, you know, you, you don't want to lose six in a row to start a road trip. I went into this road trip saying, if you go six and four, that, that's good. You know, you got to have a winning record now uh, because I don't care who you're playing. You kind of, the Potters have put themselves in the hole that they're in and the Cardinals are playing really good. The Reds get to play minor league teams the rest of the way it feels like. Um, so you, you have to win games. And obviously the six and four is now uh, impossible because they've already, they started off 0 and 5. Uh, so it doesn't matter if they win the rest, but it was good to see them win Wednesday. Good to see them win Thursday. They won Wednesday to prove to 75 and 70. St. Louis did win, so they stayed a game behind St. Louis in the wild card. Uh, Profar, uh, Padres won this one nine to six. Uh, by the way, I think it was interesting that Profar batted leadoff. Uh, he's put together really good at bats when he's gotten yeah, in the exactly. game, when he's starting. Uh, you know, he has that kind of infectious personality so maybe that's what Tingler is going for there and Myers and Grisham have been struggling um uh, and Tommy Pham it's not he's not hot like he was uh what was that the beginning uh the middle of the season yeah, um so like right the you're just gonna go with the hot guy now um and Profar seems to be that so 
I, I, I anticipate them to continue riding him regardless if that's first base based on matchups, if that's the outfield. Um, so, I, I mean, I like him. I like that. I mean, he's a switch hitter, so he, you know, there's options there. You're not going to, it's not like he's a lefty or a righty and he's planted there. Uh, so that's, that's good news. Um, and then pregame, Vince Velasquez signed with the Padres. He's expected to start uh, at St. Louis on Friday in place of Blake Snell, who was placed on the 10-day IL uh, with the groin issue. Had a feeling that was coming, right? Um, just the way that yeah. he came off the mound, you know, he tried to push through it after that 10th pitch, the 11th pitch. He says he's done. And when a guy does that, he can't really even make it to the dugout without, you know, bending over. Um, you, you kind of sensed it was happening. Uh, I believe Tingler said that there was more soreness, that um, it wasn't getting much better. Uh, so they're hopeful that he can pitch the Giants series uh, when they come back home. So we'll see about that. But Vince Velasquez, I did want to talk about him. Uh, came Coming over from the Phillies, the Phillies released him after designating him for assignment last week. Uh, this is kind of like a Jake Arrieta, I guess, kind of trying to – I mean, Arietta's old, Velasquez is yeah. kind of younger, but I guess the Potters are just, they need arms one, and they're trying to find, you know, trying to catch lightning in a bottle, I guess. Give a couple good starts is all they need out of him. Uh, he's done that this year. I have a post out on gaslandball.com about what Velasquez could bring to the team. And I think what they're expect or uh, not expecting, they're expecting him to go maybe four innings, three runs, something like that. But it would be sure nice if he could give him something like he did against the Marlins earlier this year, where it was in July, I think. He went like six, seven innings, gave up only one run. Mid-90s fastball, he was playing it up in the zone. And so mm-hmm. if he can get back to that, I think, you know, looking at it from an optimistic point of view, a glass half full, yeah, he struggled with the Phillies. But, uh, again, with the optimistic point of view, there's uh, the upsides there. And if he can, maybe this time off helped him um, or maybe being down in the minor leagues, getting confidence back or something, maybe that helps him. Uh, but maybe, I, I don't know how much you know about Vince Velasquez, uh, but just what are your thoughts? I mean, it, it's another arm, you know, because, you know, it all, I think it all kind of ties back to that trade deadline where we didn't really get any arms. And then you add on top of that, um, all the injuries that have happened and it's kind of just like, you know, who are we going to get? We need to get someone because, you know, we don't have any arms. So, I mean, you know, I just said optimistic point of view, you know, maybe he can get uh, four or five innings of two to three run uh, baseball and hopefully our offense can show up, but, you know, I, I'm, I'm not expecting a whole lot, but hopefully, you know, as you said, optimistic, you know, you just got to be optimistic as a fan, you know? So yeah, not not too much expecting, but yeah, just got to hope, I guess. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, so moving, for, you know, onto this game on that happened on Wednesday, um, it was a it was it was weird because you know the offense had been flat for oh, for what a week. It was their first lead that they had in a week when Frazier had an RBI double down the line, two RBI double or RBI hit down the left field line that made it 2 nothing. Machado RBI single to right made it 3 nothing. Hosmer 2 RBI single later in the game in the second inning made it 5 nothing. Profar hit a two-run homer, which was nice to see, made it 7-3 in the seventh. Uh, the bullpen was shaky, uh, mm-hmm. which obviously can't – you. it pains me uh, to be watching these games late at night and you have a lead. Uh, especially when you haven't been playing well, you have a lead. You feel like, okay, this is good. Going to get a, you know, get going to get a win, maybe get back on the right track. Now they got the win, but it wasn't the most encouraging win based on the bullpen. You know, Stammen gives up two home runs. Yeah. Pagan walks the first two guys. Uh, Brandon Crawford bails him out, I think, on a pop-up. Yeah. Bryant got out. He got out of the inning, so props to him. Uh, you know, in recent outings, that hadn't happened. Uh, so mm-hmm. that was that was good to see. Uh, but I mean, still, I mean, those first two, three batters, it's like, he didn't know what a strike zone was. He, he just could not find it. Yeah. And it, it, it sucked watching it because it was like, 
you're waiting for the home run, right? With Pagan, um, you're waiting for it because it feels like that's kind of been like his role is the, these last few weeks or whatnot. It's like, okay, Pagan's going to come in. He'll give up a home run and then Tingler's going to pull him. Uh, so it, again, it was good to see him get out of it, but I guess the non-optimistic part, you know, of a Padre fan in me was like, oh, here we go again. He's not fully back. Yeah, like, I, I don't know. Is it just me or is it like kind of like I'm questioning kind of why they keep putting him in in the eighth inning? Yeah, like, yes, yes. And I mean, it's kind of, I guess the argument for him doing that is kind of like, okay, who else do they have? I mean, you don't want Tim Hill because he's more of a lefty specialist. Austin Adams, you don't want him pitching because he could just hit a million batters and totally torpedo the game out. Uh, who else? You don't, Daniel Hudson hasn't been great. I think they like him in the sixth or seventh inning, more in a high leverage mid game scenario. Um, who else? I mean, who else are they going to go to? You know, yeah, I think, true. I think that would, I think that's, that's their reasoning behind it. Um, I mean, really. Stammen, they like using for bullpen games and multiple innings or, you know, fourth or fifth inning. You don't really see him late in games. Um, Pierce Johnson, yeah, he could be an eighth inning guy, I guess. But then what, what, do you, what are you going to do for the bullpen game? They like him in the first inning of bullpen games. Uh, I think he's kind of more in like a Stammen situation where middle of the game, that's where he goes. So. Just kind of, I guess, yeah. who else are they going to go to would be the argument yeah, again. Sure. I got uh, it. Yeah. So, as for this game, again, it was encouraging. Nine runs. I mean, how many runs did they combine for? In the they combined for, let's see, uh, two, three, no, two. Yeah, two runs in the. Two. <laughs> They combined for two yeah. runs in the last three games heading into uh, Wednesday night's game, and then they score nine. So it's like, okay, where, the, where were those runs earlier? Save or save some of those runs for the St. Louis series coming up. Um, but, again, it was good overall. I mean, they proved back to five games over 500, and they'd continue that against Kevin Gosman, which was really surprising to me. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm not, I'm not a Giants fan, so I don't watch all of Gosman's starts, but earlier in the year he's – he was like the front runner for the Cy Young, it seemed like. Yep. Um, him and Zach Wheeler. It seems like he's kind of came, you know, declined a little bit. And he he, he wasn't really himself. Tatis moving to Thursday's game. Padres went seven to four. Tatis hit his 39th home run of the year. Uh, made, Moonshot. Yeah. Well, no, not – I mean, it was kind of a liner. Uh, I meant like – down the it was field line. crushed off the bat, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like 111 or something off the bat, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that made it 2 nothing in the third. And then what I liked about this, you know, from the offense was it was multiple contributors. It wasn't just one guy hitting a homer or it wasn't just two guys, you know, driving in all the runs. What I noticed these last two games, it was a lot of guys having multi-hit games. Tatis, Nola, Frazier, Manny. Sure. Uh, you know, so I think Frazier had a great – you know, last couple of games, um, it was five to two in the eighth. There's another guy, Myers, drove in a run. Uh, mm-hmm. I think he was double. Yeah, he was. Was he? Cut? No. Uh, Wednesday he was coming off the bench. Thursday yes. I think he was in the lineup. Uh, but he. Oh no, he he came off the bench in this came game off the too. Bench. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because Profar um, doubled mm-hmm. down the line, made it six to two, and then the bullpen is another big story here. It it was a success again. The bullpen game was another successful. Mm-hmm. Uh, game, I strategy. I every time I go in, it's it's like you're waiting for the bullpen game to not work, and then it keeps working. Nabil Chrismat was the yeah, MVP of this game. Oh, yeah. uh, he outdueled Kevin Gosman. I know Pierce Johnson started the game for one inning, then Chrismat came in for four innings. Yeah, didn't give up hits. any runs. Three hits, one walk. He was great. Saved the bullpen. Uh, as much as it, as it was going to be saved because it was a bullpen game. Uh, but, man, he was really valuable today. And it was great to see uh, because maybe this gives the Padres some confidence in him to pitch later in games. Uh, but then also 
then if you're going to do another bullpen game or you have Vince Velasquez yeah. going, then it's like, well, you kind of want that insurance option. But the good news is now that you have Chris Matt like if he continues pitching well, you have multiple options that can go multiple innings. You know, you have you have Stammen, you have Chris Matt. Um, you can, you know, have you have Weathers obviously. So there's options, and I think so that that can only help. Um, who else? You know, like I mentioned, those four shutout innings. Uh, you know, they did give up four runs in the game. But that's going to happen, you know, when there's it's more. Game, yeah. yeah, when there's more relievers coming out out of that bullpen gate, that's just greatens the, you know, heightens the chances of one reliever not being on their game, giving up a home run, stuff like that. Uh, but overall, good offensive, excuse me, <clears throat> good offensive performance. Um, again, and then the bullpen pitch, well, you got to, I think you just got to continue. Uh, this momentum going into the St. Louis series, but what was the most, I guess, encouraging thing that you saw from these last two games? Because I don't want to focus on getting swept and then losing the first um, two games. Man. Just the positives. Positives. Okay. Um, let's see. Probably the offense, you know, finally showing up, I guess. Uh, I mean, that was kind of the big thing, um, mm -hmm. that and pitching, but I mean, pitching, you, you really can't do anything. Um, you know, with what you got, injuries and stuff. But, you know, the Bill Grisman, as you said, he was excellent in that last game. Um, I thought that, you know, in the, the game Wednesday even, um, where is it? You know, I know we allowed six runs, but um, <clears throat> Joe Musgrove, I thought he was pretty good, you know, grinded out into a quality start. Um, overall, I think it's just the offense, you know, showing up. Uh, Jerkson profile was huge. I think that was a big, you know, him – you know, coming up and lead off those last two games, you know, he kind of got the guys going. I thought um, Adam Frazier, as you said, showed up finally. He had that, like, uh, was it like a three-hit game in that, this, the game today. Um, yeah, but I think the main, the main focus is probably just the, uh, the offense finally showing up, getting some runs. Um, you know, the, as you said, they scored two going into that Wednesday game in their last three games. And then they, like, Exploded for nine and then what seven in the last two? Yeah, yeah. That, that's crazy. Um, yeah, just offense showing up. Hopefully, they can keep it rolling because I think we're gonna need it, you know, with the pitching that we got coming up. Um, yeah, just the offense. I think that's that was the main focus for this, uh, these last two wins. And I've said it multiple times, uh, you can't win games when you don't score runs. So, when you score this many runs, I mean. Save it for the St. Louis series, please. I mean, <laughs> if, if if they can do that, I I mean, I don't want to say this. Who cares how much how how bad the, the starters go? But then I know that you know you can't give up six seven runs because you're not going to win that game. Um, but let's talk about the wild card positioning a little bit before we get into the St. Louis series. Um, with these two hot. wins. 76 and 70 is where the Padres stand right now. Uh, they're a half game back of St. Louis for the second wild card. Coming into today on Thursday for this win, they were um, a game a game back. And then a win, St. Louis was not playing today. They had the off day going into tomorrow's series. So uh, Padres gained a half game on them. They're a half, So a half game back in the wild card. This is, I feel like, you can make the argument this is where the wild card is going to be decided. The Reds, maybe they'll creep back in. You know, hopefully that doesn't happen. Um, let's look where the Reds are right now. Um, they're one game back, it looks like. Yeah. So yeah. one game, but they're three and seven in their last 10, so they're not playing well yeah. either. Philly's out of it, I think, three games back. Mets are out of it at five. Um, so – the, you know, the main competition for the Padres is the Cardinals who they're looking up at by a half a game. This series, if the Padres sweep, wow, being, you know, two and a half up, that would be huge. Oh, yeah. But then if the Cardinals sweep, which is, you know, a like, I'm not saying likely, it's a scenario that, you know, could have happened with the pitchers matchup seeing, you know, on paper. Um, that, that could definitely end the Padres season, you know, being three and a half back. Mm -hmm. with what two weeks left that's that's yeah. a that's, that's a big hill to climb when 
the Cardinals play the Brewers, who are a good team, but they're they've good. already locked up a playoff spot. They're already in pretty much. Um, I, I'm not. Oh, yeah. They haven't locked it up, but they they're going to win the division pretty easily. So they might not be, you know, pitching all of their, you know, big arms. So that could be easier than it would have been at the at the middle of the year. And then they play the Cubs, who, yeah, those guys have nothing to lose. So maybe that is a good thing for the Padres. But at the same time, it's still not – it's not like they're playing the Dodgers like we are. So, again, this series, I do – obviously, they have to win the series. Um, you know, if they win the series, then they'd be a half game up. So, you just kind of tip the scales. It wouldn't be – it wouldn't look that much of a big difference. But losing the series is, then you'd be a game yeah. and a half back, uh, which would make it hard, harder, obviously. Um, so, with that said, moving into this St. Louis series, the pitching matchups, Vince Velasquez on Friday uh, for the Padres, Padres debut, Miles Michaelis for the Cardinals. Uh, this is going to be a big start from uh, Velasquez. I don't really know what to expect out of him. Um, just because he hasn't pitched in a big league game since July 30th, the trade deadline. Um, so you don't really know what to expect. Maybe, maybe he goes four innings. I don't, I don't really, I, I, in an expectation, you know, what would be, I guess your expectation in terms of how many runs, like the cap of how much he can afford to give up? Oh, well, I mean, that, that that's kind of like a – it can either be he, he can't give up two runs or he can't – he can afford to give up eight runs, it seems like, with the way our offense plays. But I think, like, the cap for him, um, I, I don't know, man, probably around, like, like – Three or four Three runs. or four, yeah, I would say that, yeah. Uh, three or four runs, you know, that I think that would be quality for him, you know, if especially if he can get through, like, four innings with that, too. I think that would be huge. Um, yeah, like three or four, I would say that would be a good number. Yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned those four innings um, that, you know, might be the, you know, innings number that he might end up having to go. Um, the Padres, obviously, with expanded rosters, you know, I, you know, published that bullpen chart on Talking Fires at Twitter, the Instagram, the Twitter every day before the game with the pitch counts of the last five days of every reliever. And obviously with the bullpen day, Chris Matt's going to be down, you know, 62 pitches today. Johnson's probably down to 25. Adams probably down 21 pitches. Um, so the guys available, Lamette is going to be available. He hasn't pitched since the 13th. Uh, Weathers hasn't pitched since the 12th. So those are two guys that will probably come in after him, I would, I would assume. Detweiler had, is coming into tomorrow's game with two days rest. Uh, Anderson, if he's going to still be up, will be on three days rest. So those are the options. I mean, Stammen's on one day's rest, but they probably want to keep him available yeah. for the Saturday or Sunday. Um, so I, I would lament Weathers, maybe a combination of both of those guys. Um, and then you'll probably see Emilio Pagan late. Melance, that's going to be interesting. If, you know, someone has a chance to save the game on Friday, it's not going to be Melanson. I mean, he's pitched on three straight days, 10 pitches on the 14th. He had 21 pitches yesterday, and then he had 25 today uh, to finish that game. So he's going to be down. Yeah. Um, so you could see them going to Pagan, or you could see them going to. You don't uh, really know. Even, like, I mean, yeah, I mean. Pagan, who else would we count on? Yeah. Pagan would be on three straight days, but only threw seven pitches today. Hudson threw 27, so I think they'd like it to be a quick inning and, you know, yeah. not make him have to close. Um, so that'll be interesting to see. Uh, obviously, one way you could just not even have to worry about that is you're up by five oh, runs wow. in the ninth yep. inning, yeah. So, but it'll be tough against Miles Michaelis. Um, as for Saturday's game, you Darvish is on the mound against Adam Wainwright. That is not a matchup that favors the Padres because Wainwright has been pitching ridiculously good. It's yeah. like he's, he's it's <laughs> like he's rewinded the clock like 10 years. Um, and Darvish obviously coming off probably his worst outing this season 
in a poverty uniform, giving up four home runs, five runs in the first inning, eight runs in total against the Giants. And the Cardinals are obviously rolling with Arenado and Goldie and Tommy Edmond and guys like that. So mm-hmm. it's going to be a tough test, and he's going to have to be – I mean, I want to set expectations for him to go six and give up two or less runs and, you know, kind of how we were expecting out of Musgrove and Snell as of late. Uh, but with that, just the way he's been pitching, and you don't know if the back injury or the hip has had anything to do with it. You just kind of want him. You want to set the bar a little lower. You know, three runs maybe. Just keep him in the game, I guess, and hope that Wainwright's curveballs are you know staying over the middle of the plate. Uh, but is that you kind of agree with that? Where you want Darvish on Saturday? Yeah, I just want I, a big thing I'm looking for from Darvish though is just locating. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, hitting those spots, you know, not giving up you know, pitches that are in the sweet, the batter's sweet spot, you know, where they can line it up perfectly. But right. yeah, just hopefully you can, you know, grind out a, a couple innings here, you know, five or six innings, hopefully of three run baseball. And I think that'll be an ideal, ideal start. For and as for Sunday, Cardinals haven't named a starter, I believe. Uh, Jake Arrieta goes for the Padres. Uh, kind of the same thing that I'm expecting uh, him and Darvish. I mean, that's weird to say. That's expect- crazy to say, yeah. Expecting <laughs> him on the same level and expectations. But Arietta hasn't even really pitched that bad, you know, for the Padres uh, recently. And the bottom line, at least for me, is the Padres need him to pitch. It's It's yeah. not like they have a lead or anything. Um, they need him to pitch, you know, 20, what was that, 2016 caliber. I'm not saying for him to, you know, throw no hitters and stuff, but I think it's it's the, this time of the year, you know, September, where you can't lose games. And this is – you're playing the team that's directly the only team above you in the second wild card spot. If you want the playoff spot, you can't be giving up a bunch of runs and have these – small starts, short starts. And so Arietta, you know, last time out, three and two thirds, gave up three runs. If he does that, you know, gives up three runs. And instead of three and two thirds innings, it's more like five. Uh, I, I personally be happy with that. Yeah, 100%. I mean, yeah, it's kind of, I feel like, like you said, it's kind of like the, the Darvish situation now. You, you Darvish needs to bounce back, have a have a quality start. I feel, um, or at least close to that. Um, and I think that we, as you said, we need we kind of need Arietta to do that. As much as it's kind of like weird to say, um, it, it's that time of the year. You know, you're playing the team that's directly ahead of you. You got to show up and you got to you got to pitch well. You can't be giving up all these all the runs to the team that's directly ahead of you. Yeah, you know, it just comes down to that. Yeah. Yeah. So again, Potter's need to win this series. I think they probably need to win every series based on, especially when they, you know, started the road trip 0 and 5. I think that was really set them back. Uh, I don't care that they're playing the Dodgers and the Giants. They were really competitive with the Dodgers and the Giants pretty much the entire year. And they just weren't competitive with them the first three games of the road trip getting swept. I mean, that Saturday game, you could argue, but it didn't really feel like that. And then this, uh, the first two games of the Giants series wasn't competitive either, really. So, you you know, you've dug a hole, and now you have to dig yourself out of it. But it's exactly. a great opportunity. That's that's the mindset I think you have to go in with your Padre player. You're on the coaching staff. I mean, we've played really bad. And I'm speaking from a player's point of view. Let's, you know, going in, say saying to yourself, saying to the team, it's like, we played really, really bad. You know, these last this last month, um, getting swept recently, uh, you know, getting swept by Colorado weeks ago, getting swept by the Dodgers at Petco, getting swept again at Dodger Stadium, uh, getting no hit by Tyler Gilbert. All of these things that add up. Um, and with all that said, it's in our hands. Half game back, playing the team that we're a half game back of this weekend. So let's go out and win the series and at least come out of Bush Stadium uh, coming back home with some type of lead. Obviously, you want it to be two and a half games. That would be ideal. 
uh, with the sweep, but based on the pitching matchup, it's, it's hard to, you know, think that's going to happen. But before I get, uh, you know, one reason that you could have optimism going in is Jake Cronenworth. Jay Stingler said today that Jake Cronenworth is expected to return sometime this weekend. Don't, I probably wouldn't expect it to be Friday. Maybe it's Saturday or Sunday. Um, and I thought it, Tingler was asked, you know, obviously if you haven't heard, I don't, maybe you're living under a rock, but Cronenworth fractured his finger, uh, his left ring finger. And so they just had to stop, you know, doing much baseball activity, let the inflammation go down. And so it seems like that's, you know, his finger's getting better. And now it's just pain tolerance with holding the bat, swinging the bat. Because it is on his glove hand, which I think is good. You know, you're not gripping the baseball and having to throw. So I guess that's good. Um, but, I mean, there's no doubt. I mean, even an 80% Jake Cronenworth is better than, you know, I think at least a full Hassan Kim. I know he hasn't been playing, but that's yeah. another option that they've had. Adam Frazier is playing really well right now. So Jay Singler said that he didn't doesn't even know where Jake Croner is going to play when he comes back. So I totally, I mean, I understand him saying that because, you know, I mean, if Frazier wasn't, you know, hitting like he has the past couple of games, again, you're riding the hot bat. If he hasn't been hitting like this the last couple of games, they probably, you know, Cronenworth would be playing second base and Frazier would probably not be playing um, or Cronenworth would be playing first. I would expect Cronenworth to play first because they need mm -hmm. Frazier in the lineup and they need Tatis yeah, yeah. and Manny and obviously all of them. Um, you know, you want Grisham in there, Pro first having good at bats, you can stick him in right or left. So I think that's how I would go if I was that's Tingler, if I was yeah. the front office. Uh, because while well, Hosmer did come through with the RBI single or whatever, uh, what was that, Wednesday, um, he's still – Cronenworth's a better hitter. Cronenworth's a better player. It's not even close right now. So – and same goes with Frazier offensively right now. You got, you got to go with the hot bat. It doesn't matter what your contract status is. It does, I mean, unless you're Manny and Tatis and or in Cronenworth, pretty much, uh, you're not. You're going to be playing, or th those three are going to be playing, regardless. Anyone else? I mean, if you're not playing well right now, it doesn't matter what your status is. You're not going to be hitting. You're not going to be in the lineup. So. You agree with where once Cronenworth returns, that's another sign of optimism. That's one bright spot going in. Hopefully it's, you know, you'd wish it to be Friday, but I wouldn't put my hopes on that. Probably Saturday or Sunday. Yeah. Um, I think, I think I agree with pretty much everything you're saying there. Um, you know, you need Cronenworth in the lineup. You need um, Frazier in the lineup. He's been, you know, getting multi-hit games left and right now. Um, Profar has been great. Um, I think you need to keep him in there as long as, you know, you're kind of right in the hot hand. Um, and then you need Tatis and Machado as well. But, um, you know, it just depends. Do you put Tatis in the outfield again or and take maybe Fam out or, you know, do you take Cosmer out? I think the yeah, no brainer know. is take yeah. Cosmer out. Yeah. yeah, I think that's the easy decision. I don't think – what I don't know what good it would do to – now that you already have – you've already made the move of Tatis going to shortstop back. So yeah. – what's and it wasn't just a game it was more than that so I, I don't think or an inning it was more than that so I don't know what the purpose or what would that would even what that would do I think that would probably just piss off Tatis more than anything yeah like you put me back at shortstop for more than an inning or something and now you're going to put me back in the outfield like that doesn't really yeah. make sense so I think they're just going to ride Tatis out and hopefully nothing happens that's yep that's what like they're going to do now. Yeah, it seems, uh, it seems like the easiest thing to do. I mean, and, you know, the, the thing that would piss the less people off and, you know, keep the hottest hottest swingers, hottest fielders, hottest players overall in the game. You know, that's that's the name of the game, you know, hot, hand, hot hands in the lineup. Yeah. That's, that's what it comes down to. Yep. All right. This has been episode 59. Potters are 76 and 70. Half game back of St. Louis for the second wild card. Uh, again, big game. This is the biggest series of the season. I know we're saying that it seems like every series, but it's big. It's bigger now because I mean they're playing a St. Louis team that they're chasing a half game back of the wild card. So they got to get something. They got to win these games. There's no doubt about that. Uh, we'll come to you after the series. Hopefully, uh, good things happened. 
Um, I mean, on paper, the pitching matchups aren't favorable to the Padres, in my opinion, but we'll see how it goes. Until next time, this has been Ben Fadden, Jacob Zerman, Talking for Hours podcast. Until next time, let's go Padres.